Oh, that is insane. You have to see this. Can I use ChatGTP to design a nuclear reactor? The results most definitely will surprise you. We've seen a lot of successful cases of AI being used, everything from code debugging to college students turning in semi-understandable essays. But for every success story, there are countless failures, such as lawyers relying on ChatGTP and it just hallucinating and making up cases that never exist. And this gave me the idea to get it to design, at least in concept, something much more challenging than the classic game of Flappy Bird, the best nuclear reactor possible. And Wow, did it. Just, just crazy stuff. So stick around and let's see what it came up with. I started by asking ChatGTP to develop a reactor for producing 300 megawatts electric. The technology, materials, and fuel are any that are currently available, such as uranium, thorium, water, steel, zirconium, liquid salts, fast reactors, breeder reactors, and thermal reactors. I thought I gave ChatGTP some freedom, but what it came back with was a pretty basic pressurized water reactor design. There wasn't really any innovation here. It even spit out some very familiar diagrams of the fuel assemblies and the reactor core. The core inlet and the core outlet are reversed, at least if you assume that up is up and down is down. The thing about ChatGTP is that a lot is dependent upon the prompts. I wasn't exactly expecting fully completed engineering blueprints here, but this wasn't very creative. I wanted it to fully explore all possibilities, even if those possibilities don't exist yet. If you were to design a nuclear reactor of the future, what would be the ideal requirements? ChatGTB responded that the reactor should be safe, efficient, consider waste minimization, be cost-effective, flexible for load following, modular for construction, overall environmentally friendly, and of course, have good public acceptance. Okay, I have to admit that this is actually a pretty good set of requirements for any nuclear reactor. So the next step is to actually create the thing. Create a concept for a nuclear reactor that is expected to meet the requirements and be able to complete the outline you just made. You can use technologies that do not exist yet, but could be available with additional research. And this is where we got our first look at what ChatGTP was really thinking about. It created an advanced high temperature molten salt reactor that runs on thorium. While molten salt reactors and thorium reactors are not new concepts, Combining them in an advanced high temperature design would require significant research and development. So it's gone and done something a little bit different from what we've seen in the past. The advanced high temperature molten salt reactor will use thorium as its primary fuel. The reactor core would be designed for online refueling and waste removal, allowing for continuous operation and waste management. So it is looking to address some of the concerns and the requirements that we gave it in the beginning. So far, so good. The AHT MSR would use a molten salt mixture as both the coolant and the fuel carrier. The salt would circulate through the reactor core where the thorium fuel is dissolved. So ChatGTP suggests using a single salt thorium mixture at high temperature. For safety, it suggests including a passive safety system based on a freeze plug at the bottom of the reactor. If the reactor overheats, the plug melts and the fuel containing the salt drains into the cooling system. For power generation, it suggests that the reactor be coupled with a supercritical CO2 power cycle or with a hydrogen production system, and that this could make the reactor particularly useful for desalination or synthetic fuel production, in addition to electricity. So far, ChatGTP has designed a somewhat interesting molten salt reactor. It's actually not too different from the one in China, the TMSR 400, which has a liquid salt uranium fuel that passes through a graphite moderated core, which itself is similar to the original molten salt reactor experiment in the US at Oak Ridge National Labs in the 1960s. But as we will soon see, ChatGTP has some noticeable improvements. I pointed out to ChatGTP that its fuel was thorium-based only, and that it would need some additional source of energy or neutrons in order to breathe the thorium into usable uranium. Remember, we can't use thorium directly as a nuclear fuel, because it won't fission in its natural state. Thorium-232 first has to absorb a neutron from some other source, causing it to convert into uranium-233, which can then be used as a fuel. Ever polite, ChatGTP recognized its mistake and agreed that there did need to be some other source of neutrons. I asked it directly, how would it breathe the thorium into uranium-233? And this is where things got really interesting. It proposed three solutions. The initial neutron source could come from starter material like uranium-235 or plutonium-239. This is probably similar to most conventional approaches, like China's molten salt reactor or India's solid thorium reactors. Another possibility it suggested was to use a particle accelerator to hurl protons at a lead target and create spallation neutrons. Uh, I think that will be a bit tricky, but okay. And ChatGTP's third suggestion was to use a fusion-fission hybrid system, where a fusion reactor core serves as the neutron source. The fusion process releases high-energy neutrons, which can then be used to convert the thorium-232 into uranium-233 in the surrounding blanket of thorium. Oh no. Seeing as how these might be difficult to implement, I asked it, describe how each of these neutron sources could be integrated into the concept design. 
For the starter fissile material, a portion of the initial fuel load would be mixed with uranium-235 or plutonium-239 into the salt. This fission would then release neutrons, which would be absorbed by the thorium-232, and over time would be converted into 233, eventually the uranium-233 taking over as the primary fuel. Again, this is a pretty conventional approach to a thorium molten salt reactor. So this is a reasonable answer. For our two more difficult challenges, ChatGTP was undeterred in providing some solutions. For the external neutron source, or the particle accelerator option, a lead spallation target is placed in the center of the reactor core and bombarded with a high-energy proton beam. <sighs> okay, while this is technically probably possible, I doubt that the proton beam would eventually produce enough spallation neutrons that you could get any meaningful amount of breeding from the thorium, at least at the power levels that we'd be interested in. Oh, and also, it's ridiculous, and nobody should do this. One of the largest particle accelerators in the world is the Spallation Neutron Source in Oak Ridge in the US. It already occupies more than an entire campus and several buildings along its long acceleration channel. So trying to fit that in with our little reactor is probably not going to be very practical. And the last one, our fusion-fission hybrid system. Uh, what is it going to do to solve this? Okay, besides the fact that if we had a working fusion system, we probably wouldn't even be bothering with this thorium fission system. But nonetheless, ChatGPT said that the fusion core would act as the central part of the reactor, and that this core would be surrounded by a blanket of molten salt containing the thorium-232. The fusion core would produce high-energy neutrons as a byproduct of the fusion reaction. These neutrons, then, would be captured by the thorium in the surrounding blanket, starting the breeding process to produce uranium-233. I... I... I don't even know where to, where to start on this, but... In principle, maybe it's not the worst concept. A fusion reactor running on deuterium and tritium would produce enough neutrons from the fusion reaction to probably convert a fair amount of the thorium into uranium. When I asked ChatGTP how it would insert this fusion reactor inside of the thorium reactor, it gave two suggestions. First, it suggested a magnetic confinement fusion, where a plasma of hydrogen isotopes is confined in a magnetic field in a device called a tokamak or stellarator. The tokamak design is currently the most advanced, with ITER being an example of an ongoing large-scale project. The fusion project in France is certainly no small project, and I think it would be very difficult to squeeze this into our molten salt thorium reactor. Its second suggestion was to use inertial confinement fusion, which can at least be a little bit more compact. In this case, a small fuel pellet is rapidly heated and compressed by high-energy lasers or particle beams, causing it to implode and triggering fusion. The National Ignition Facility in the US is a leading example of an ICF. The high-energy neutrons produced by the fusion reactions would then be used to transmute the thorium-232 into fissile uranium-233. And again, just to be totally clear, trying to operate a fusion reactor inside of a molten salt thorium reactor is probably going to be insane and impossible. Okay, so if we ignore the absurdity of this Frankenstein reactor core, ah! what? and actually start getting some heat out of it, I wanted ChatGPT to tell me how we would actually get that heat transferred, and what kind of loops it would use. ChatGPT, diligent as always, suggested a three-loop setup. The primary loop circulating through the reactor core in the primary heat exchanger was a molten salt with a mixture of lithium beryllium fluoride salts, or FLIB. The heated molten salt flows through the reactor core where the fission process heats it up. The heated molten salt then travels through the primary heat exchanger, which transfers it to the secondary loop. The cooled molten salt is then pumped back into the reactor core, and the cycle repeats. So ChatGPT does have a pretty good understanding of how the molten salt would circulate through a reactor core, at least until we got to the temperatures. The operating temperatures in the primary loop would likely range from approximately 700 degrees Celsius at the inlet to around 1000 degrees Celsius at the outlet. And on this, I'm a little bit more surprised that ChatGPT is struggling to give a more consistent or reasonable answer. It's one thing to put a fusion reactor inside of a fission reactor. Rising 300 degrees across a reactor core is a pretty extreme temperature increase. We normally only see around 50 degrees Celsius on most reactors, water or otherwise. The design included an intermediate loop or secondary loop, isolated from the primary loop to prevent potential radioactive contamination. This would decrease the reactor efficiency somewhat overall, but it's not a bad idea. It also said that based on the primary loop operating temperatures of 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius, that the secondary loop should run a little bit lower, between 650 and 950 degrees Celsius. Again, a pretty big temperature change across the beginning and the end. The secondary loop is then connected to the third and final loop, which is the power generation loop. Here, ChatGPT suggests using a supercritical carbon dioxide Brayton cycle. The inlet temperature to the turbine could be around 500 to 550 degrees Celsius. After expansion in the turbine, the supercritical CO2 might be cooled down to around 30 or 40 degrees Celsius before it is compressed and sent back to the secondary heat exchanger. And that it's worth noting that these temperatures are much higher than those used in traditional light water reactors, which operate with a coolant exit temperature around 300 to 350 degrees Celsius. 
Operating at higher temperatures improves the thermodynamic efficiency of the power cycle, allowing for more of the heat produced in the reactor to be converted into electricity. And because supercritical CO2 has higher heat capacity and density, an equivalent turbine setup is about half the size compared to a traditional steam turbine setup. So ChatGPT is actually making some reasonable points here. It just has some numbers that need some work and a lot of research to go. And since one day we may actually want to build our abomination of a reactor, I asked ChatGPT how much it would cost and what is the timeline for construction. On this it gave a big caveat to its answer. Since the advanced high temperature molten salt reactor involves several advanced and not fully mature technologies, like the thorium fuel cycle, molten salt technology, fusion neutron source, etc., significant upfront research and development investment would be required to bring these technologies to a state where they could be commercially deployed. Yeah, no kidding. Considering the complexity of the design and technology, and comparing it with the cost of new generation reactors, we might expect the cost of constructing a first-of-a-kind advanced high-temperature molten salt reactor to fall within the range of three to six billion dollars. And once all the necessary approvals and permits are in place, construction could take seven to ten years. So on this, ChatGPT is probably correct. It would be very difficult and expensive to try and build a reactor like this for the first time, even if you ignore all of the impossibilities of the fusion inside a fission reactor. And like before with our simple PWR design, I was hoping that ChatGPT would be able to give us a schematic or a diagram of what its reactor design looked like. And it did, but not in a very satisfying way. Technically all the parts are there, our reactor core with the fusion source, our primary loop leading to the heat exchanger, our secondary loop, and then onto the power generation and onto the grid. Since ChatGPT was having a little bit of trouble creating the design with anything more than some text characters, I asked it to create a mid-journey prompt so we could visualize what our reactor design might actually look like. And wow, did it deliver. Here is our beautiful advanced high temperature molten salt reactor on top of a hill. Here it is down in a nice calming valley. Here's inside of the control room. Here are some children and families out on a picnic playing in front. And because I know you're wondering, what does the fusion fission core look like? Well, something like this. But just an endless array of beautiful, beautiful, absolutely meaningless images. All of our advanced high temperature molten salt reactor as generated by ChatGPT and imagined by Midjourney. So are AI and machine learning ready to design nuclear reactors? Am I, as a professional nuclear engineer, worried about AI coming for my job? No, no, not even close. At least not for general AI like ChatGPT. And I'm not saying that just so that I can stay gainfully employed. ChatGPT was constantly struggling to give any meaningful technical details, and was routinely giving warnings and disclaimers about what it was producing. Professional reactor design involves a multidisciplinary team of experts, including nuclear physicists, nuclear engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, material scientists, and many others. Nuclear engineering is a serious discipline that deals with a phenomena that can be harmful if not properly controlled. Safety is paramount in this field, and the regulatory framework in most countries is stringent. Large language models like ChatGPT rely on huge amounts of data come from the internet in order to be able to predict what the next step or word is in a sentence based on a given input. And we saw that when I pressed it about its need to have a neutron source in order to breed the thorium fuel. So ChatGPT went and found a source of neutrons, inserting a fusion reactor right into the middle. The impracticality of this it can't really distinguish. For reactor design specifically, ChatGPT is working with a very limited data set. There's only so much information publicly available on the internet and in books that it could actually use to be able to generate some sort of design ideas. The type of knowledge and information that's required for that is not readily available on the internet and requires years of experience in design as well as experiments and testing and results. And these are things that ChatGPT just does not have access to. And while I'm personally not worried about it yet, just in case one day the machines do eventually take over, I will say some positive things about our future Skynet overlords. Come with me if you want to live. It's okay, Mom. He's here to help. One area that's showing promise is in the maintenance of nuclear plants. There's a lot of data available, and it's usually in the form and format that's convenient for machine learning, like test reports and operation history. A company called Blue Wave Labs AI received a $7 million grant from the U.S. Department of Energy in order to explore this concept further. In fact, this approach is already being looked at at several plants in order to make sure that components get the appropriate amount of maintenance that they need so that it's not too often and that doesn't go too long between intervals. Regulators, on the other hand, are just beginning to get prepared. 
The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission released its strategic plan for AI, and in it it says, The deployment of AI technologies by the nuclear industry is on the horizon. The NRC anticipates that within the next few years, an existing licensee, new, or advanced nuclear technology applicant may employ AI in such a manner that it requires NRC regulatory approval or oversight. Meaning using AI in the design, the decision-making process, and even the control with limited or no human oversight is under consideration. However, the NRC, like many regulators, has struggled to keep up with technological advancements, even within its own field. Add to that something completely unfamiliar and moving much, much more quickly than they're used to, and I think it will be several years before we see any kind of approval or guidance on AI within the nuclear industry. AI is a rapidly developing field, with a lot of change and uncertainty ahead. Nuclear energy has historically been slow to adopt change, but maybe this time will be different. Do you think AI will change the future for nuclear energy? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this rather unusual episode, and I'll see you in the next one.